leave for Passover. The angel that comes to retrieve us when we leave for Passover. The Messiah tells us clearly that an angel is going to come to retrieve us. And so what we have on that is Matthew 24, um, 31. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they were, will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. <clears throat> so again, when we leave, he's going to come find us. It should be at our homes. Um, if you have a large congregation, if you're staying the night there, then that's also great. Um, somewhere where you're able to go in and not leave until the angel comes to retrieve you. Um, <clears throat> and I was talking to somebody today who shared a vision with me that they had on this particular point, which is kind of why I'm doing this lesson as well, because her vision fit in perfectly with this. So let's look for the same issue in Torah, because again, if we're going to find, if the Messiah is going to talk about it, we should have it in Torah as well. And we find it in Exodus 23. Um, and I'm going to start in verse 20, but I'm going to go for a long time because there's so much information that is here. In Exodus 23, 20, See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I prepared. 21, pay attention to him and listen to what he says. Do not rebel against me, you, uh, against him. He will not forgive. It actually it says basically, be careful around him because he will not forgive your trespass since my name is in him. Again, bad translation. Sorry about that. Um, 22, if you listen carefully to what he says and do all that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and I will oppose those who oppose you. 23, my angel will go ahead of you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hitt Hittites, Rebusites, and I will wipe them out. 24, do not bow down before their gods or worship them or follow their practices. You must demolish them and break their sacred stones to pieces. We have that in other uh, verses in the Torah to you know, just utterly destroy their places of worship. Verse 25, worship the Lord your God and his blessings will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. So, what's the food that we're going to have at that time? Manna, um, the water he is providing, and he should be curing us of sicknesses at that time. However, also don't forget the issue we have from uh, Jeremiah 48, where he says, "I won't," you know, I'm still going to. Uh, sorry, 46. He says, I'm still going to uh, punish you, but only in due measure. And then he also tells us that we will, that what that punishment will be, we will have an incurable illness or um, a severe injury. Now, again, there are no curses from the Creator. Anything that you think is a curse, like a severe injury or an incurable illness, is in fact a blessing. And it always is. So what we think, oh, this is bad. The issue is it's there for our benefit. It's there to heal us. We have all this crazy stuff in our system from vaccines, from the garbage food that they put out there, uh, toxins in everything that we have. They put poisons in our water. Whatever sickness we have is going to be clearing us out of this. And we have proof of this. So let's look at the next verse where it shows us this. 26, and none of you will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. A full lifespan. Now we know from Isaiah it says the person who lives to 100 is cursed. And here it says, I'm going to give you a full lifespan. What is a full lifespan? Noah lived 950 years old. Now, he is the oldest person in the Bible. I know that your Bible translations in the modern tribal or my modern Bible say Methuselah was the oldest, but when you actually go look at the Samaritan, he wasn't. Um, Noah was. Why? Well, Noah obeyed. You get a benefit when you obey. So, is 950 years our full lifespan? I don't know. I mean, I'm not here to kind of pass. This is what it's going to be. That's for the Creator to decide. But I do know we're going to have a long lifespan, a full lifespan. Verse 27, I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. 
I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. Well, we get that completely, you know, that's Joel 2 army as well as the whole aspect of the Exodus of what we're doing. But 20, 28, and I'm going to do a word study on this because it's such an amazing verse. 23, 28, I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive out the Hivites, Canaanites, and Hittites out of your way. Because why do I say that? Because I think of the fifth trumpet judgment of the locust. So I'll do a word study on that. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> verse 29, <clears throat> but I will not drive them out in a single year. Well, that's how long is the Exodus? It's three and a half years. <laughs> so, because if you did it all in a year, the land would become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you've increased enough to take possession of the land. Well, he has a plan on how we do it. Well, amazingly. And he says, I'm not doing it in a year. Well, man, even do us doing the cleanup, I know he's the creator and he can do it with the snap of the finger. But we're doing the, while we're doing cleanup, we're not nearly as fast as the creator. So he's, honestly, I think he's going slower for our benefit because, man, there's only so much we can do. I mean, he's the creator. He can do it any time, but we're humans. Um, and in verse 31, I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea and from the desert to the Euphrates River. I will give you into the hands, give into your hands the people who live in the land and you will drive them out before you. 2032, do not make a covenant with them or their gods. And 32, Three, do not let them live in your land or they will cause you to sin against me because the, the worship of their gods will certainly be a snare to you. Now, I went through this, but realistically, the, what I wanted to really bring in here was just really kind of verse um, 20 and 21, and that is you be careful of this angel because he's not going to forgive your trespass because he's come from heaven. He's been to the throne room. He has the name of the Creator on him. Now, what we would see is what we would think of the 144,000, you know, much, think much later in the future, you know. But however it's done, this angel has the name of the Creator on him. He's been doing the Torah for at least thousands of years, maybe millions of years. He knows what he's doing. He he's looks at us like little first graders, because that's all we are. And that's probably giving us too much credit to be a first grader, because a first grader knows how to speak Hebrew better than we do. So, you know, we are babies, very much so. And to him, I'm sure it's just, you know, we're stumbling along. And he's like, man, I've been doing this thing for thousands of years, and you can't get your head out of your butt. So the issue is... He's not going to forgive our trespass, so we have to be careful with him. And we have an example on how to do that, because again, the Creator gives us everything. I mean, my goodness, He gives us every little detail we can possibly ask for. And this fit exactly with the vision that somebody else was telling me today that they had, which was of uh, when the angel comes to get us. Joshua 5:13. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? 14. Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell on his face, or face down on the ground in reverence, and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? Now, this is very important because there's a difference here from John falling on his face in revelation to the angel because the angel goes, no, I'm just your brother. You know, I'm just a servant, just like you. We're not bowing down in worship of this angel, but in reverence because he comes from the throne room. He has a message for us from the creator. And, you know, it's kind of like dealing with walking into a tiger pit or a lion's den. You know, you want to get in, and get, if you have to get in, get in and get out as fast as possible. That's how you should deal with this angel. Now, he's going to tell you some stuff. You can't forget a single thing he says. So <clears throat> be careful. But 
the answer we have from Joshua face down, and that should be everybody who is there at the Passover with in that home. Everybody goes down because the message is coming in. And the person who's at the door, what message does my Lord have for his servant? That's it. Boom, you've acknowledged who you're worshiping, which is the Creator, and showing respect for his messenger. Um, and of course in Joshua 5.15, Commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground, and Joshua did so. But again, the key here is you treat him with respect, and that's really the issue, respect, reverence, but not worship. We don't worship an angel, we worship the Creator. But we do show this angel a lot of respect because he is a messenger from the Creator, and we have been told to be careful with him. So, um, those who have wondered, you know, I, I wonder how we're going to leave from the Exodus. Well, he tells us. Um, and he tells us so much more in this. Um, when he tells us how you're supposed to act, holy cow, he's got everything. And, of course, at that point in time, the angel's going to direct you. You know, if you're going, I don't know, let's assume that, he wants you to get on a ship in Florida. Well, he'll tell you which ship on Florida you're going to, and that's where you go. If you're in a large group, I'm sure there's going to be multiple people going to different locations. Well, at least two, uh, or possibly at least as many as two, and maybe more. I don't know. I mean, the Creator knows. He hasn't shared that information with me. I can't put it in there because I don't know. Um, those who are in uh, 144,000 may very well have a different travel plan than everyone else. So I think there may very well be two, especially if you're in a larger group. But maybe he's putting you on different boats. I don't know. That's for the angel. That's for the creator to decide. And the creator will tell the angel. And the angel will tell us the person who answers the door. So the person who answers the door in your home needs to be prepared. That needs to be prepared on how to treat this angel because he's not going to forgive your trespass.